What questions do you have? Um, I've heard varying things, but I haven't heard it from your mouth. What's your stand on SEL? What's my stand on SEL? On social emotional learning? Yes. Well, so children often have issues that they need support in. And it's important that we support our kids. Um, it's equally important that we focus on academic success. That's a good question. Let's talk about priorities for a moment. My number one priority is going to be academic success of our students. Because as it turns out, we are schools. Parents don't send our, their kids here for babysitting. Some of them do, but they shouldn't. <laughs> they shouldn't. And they certainly don't send their kids here to be undermined in their family uh, framework of reasoning, their religion, their beliefs, their philosophy, their moral values. They send their kids to public school to be educated. Are you applying so, social emotional learning on that? No. Okay. So we're going to prioritize number one education. Which you can't do okay. if you don't meet the social emotional learning first. Exactly. All the research will back that up. All of it. We talked about the research for the school levels and everything else. We looked at the research for how kids can learn and how they can reach I'm, their I'm aware of social emotional learning. I'm aware of the need for it. And we're still going to prioritize academic expense. So will SEL be here next year? Will we be able to provide that service next year? I guess you have to be specific on the program. Are we going to have resources for our, our, our students? Because absolutely, we will continue our SEL to, to support is our leader students. In me. It was district adopted. Yeah, okay. It's leader in me. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, no one's talked about abandoning the group. Uh, so I believe that there's some pretty good priorities there. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, well, we have staff. <coughs> Will we continue to have a building counselor to help us and so building social worker to help with the needs of our students? I can't answer that entirely yet because we're continuing to work on next year's budget and next year's staffing allocation. And there certainly are decisions to be made there. I guess my question is, you say change is coming. And as teachers, change doesn't scare us because that's our life. That would that's, be my hope. That's our consistency. That would be my hope. But to build better relationship, when do you plan on sharing the vision, like the time frame, instead of getting the Friday at four o'clock bombshells? I mean, because I think you could really build your community and your team if everybody, you know, when people are informed, there's no fear. You know what's going on. But when you lack of transparency, lack of communication creates fear. So when, and I know you had shared before that you're in 30 days, that was kind of like you're going to get the ball rolling and then you're going to start sharing what's going on. When will you be sharing that? Will it be in the form of an outline? Will we know long term or is it going to continue to be? So if you're asking for a three year plan now. I'm not asking. I'd be happy with six months. <laughs> uh, you, just, you just got a six month plan and, and unfortunately I'm getting a lot of complaints about having made it public. So. Uh, we're going plan? to consolidate sixth grade into elementary schools for the next six months. Okay. Yes, okay. We're right for the next six months. Mm -hmm. We are going to ensure that we maximize our facility use in the middle school because that's the one place where we have overcrowding. Okay. We're going to avoid closing elementary schools, even though we've been at close to 50% capacity. I'm sorry, not to interrupt because so, that sparked my idea. Wait, can you say that? Excuse but you're actively, so for the 23 24 year, Gateway will be here as a pre K to six, but you are actively searching and accepting um, charter schools to pay. We absolutely will entertain charter. And again, full disclosure, I'm telling you that we don't know when that will happen, but we will continue to entertain those, those yeah, conversations. As an educator, I would hope it wouldn't be like we wouldn't come back in August first and say, hey, a charter school's coming in at Gateway. Is it? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, but like, would you change? Like, could you have the could you guys have the summer and then all this rolls around and you get an application? Oh no, 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 no! Uh, that's what I was saying earlier. We're at the end of February. I don't expect any any charter applications for the upcoming year. And at the end of that line, right? So again, thinking forward, uh, we, will, we will certainly entertain uh, new school ideas. We'll continue to entertain new school ideas in the program. But we'll always try to, to be transparent whenever we get an application like that or that discussion comes open. We'll make sure everyone knows, just as we did last time, as soon as it became real. We put out a press release about it. I, know, I think you could have alleviated a lot of like anxiety and stress had we known that it was, uh, if you could maybe, I know it's difficult, but maybe try to beat the rumor, you know, and just you say- You can't this, beat the rumor, no. 
but you would be proactive. Yeah, and, and we were. We put out a press release as soon as it was ready. So, Ken, can I just get yeah. some clarification? Because just a minute ago, you said you're actively recruiting charter schools, but in answer to Jessica's question, you said that you will certainly no, so we're actively yeah. entertaining so, charter school applications. You, With, you said you were, you were recruiting, I believe. Was we were did recruit, recruit earlier, I'm sorry. So early this year, we spoke to a number of charter school groups that said, hey, we'd like to talk. We said, okay, great, let's talk. Uh, one of them came forward and said they really would like to quiz everybody forth an application. As soon as we got an intent, we let everybody know. They didn't want to follow through with it. So okay, fine. for the next we, we, school year, but that conversation is out there. Or will you be going out and seeking them? No, I think the word's already out. We're simply entertaining. My guess is that we will see some applications, but I don't know. Yep. I have a two-part question. Uh, first of all, when you're looking at, I'm, I'm from out of the state, and I've worked in a lot of different schools. One, when you're implementing these changes, like bringing in sixth grade, or you know, having the concerns about your, your uh, special ed kids, um, I don't hear conversations that you're bringing in the staff that that's gonna affect, that have boots on the ground with these kids and know the programs in and out to find out what the repercussions pro or con could be for making those changes. You know, I don't hear that that's happening other than the board just making a decision. So that's one question I wonder. It's not a question, that's an indictment. That, okay. that, the question is, are you bringing in those people well, like to have those conversations <laughs> as a professional team versus the board just making a decision and maybe they're not boots on the ground in the school to understand all the repercussions that bring. Well, second part is, are you wanting charter schools to make a change just for the sake of change? And I ask that because worked at a lot of schools and Gateway is a very unique school. It's different than any school I've ever worked with. And from my feedback, just from what I've heard they knew here, the parents like it, the teachers like it, the kids like it. So if we're a unique identity already, but yes, we're part of the public school, maybe that's the change that we already need. Why do we need to change just to offer another option when this seems like it is another option compared to so that was the point i made earlier i think william parker center did a really good job historically of creating why change what's not broken program. like it's working so well why change that's the mantra of mediocrity the truth is if you don't believe improvement is possible then you're not have you been here long enough to know I've looked, I've looked at five years of data. You know, this I've school, looked at five years of data. Not data. 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 People. I understand. And if you don't have great school, we're doing. you have great staff. And if you don't have great staff, your rules and your ideology of what it should be is not going to run a school. I completely agree with you. And in fact, great staff is, is one of the key things we want. And you will, you're we want to make absolutely, great we want to make staff. absolutely certain that we are recognizing and rewarding great teachers and, include them and that we're attracting great teachers. Include them. Why are you taking your people, people, be people that are here? Because like, yeah. emotionally, I'll tell you, I, as a mom of three <coughs> uh, graduates that have all three attended different schools, done school, charter school, and public school, yeah. I get it. And I've worked at charter schools and it's great to have options, but I've never been in a situation where there's this kind of fear. And I feel like this wasn't for them. And I, I would love to for you guys to use your sources to build what's good. And if people feel good, they're gonna work harder, they're gonna perform. Because you can have a mediocre curriculum and the right teachers to implement it. And it comes off it. Absolutely agree. So number one, you're talking about fear. Yeah. I we all that, have fear. I understand that everyone fears change. Oh, no. 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 When I first heard, and I don't believe rumors, but I was talking to a teammate and I said, I am not a rumor person because, but it's alarming when more of the rumors prove to be true than what we're hearing from the, from yes. you and from the board. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that's the thing. And we we do not fear change. Change happens all the time. We've been through so many curriculums. We've been in different buildings, different rooms. Uh, okay, I so, appreciate but, that, but you just told me we're afraid. So you yeah, need to be But you can't assume that it's fear. You need to be specific. Do you want to keep the staff hired? Like, do you want them to keep the staff? I absolutely want to keep the staff. It is my great hope that we find great programs, great curriculum, continue to have great schools, and improve our academic performance. Raise your hand if you're thinking about leaving right now or to have a plan B. <laughs> What do you guys do with kids? I was for proactive to help keep the staff. I have a question Maybe about the curriculum. You have kids in the school district that are going to go to. I have a question about the curriculum. So you said it's science great curriculum, but the curriculum that we've adapted in the last two years are state approved curriculums, and they seem to be doing fairly well with our school. Yeah, we're going to replace curriculum. I understand. And did anybody I'm think that about the we want to continue grade to children that are going to be more? Our focus should be on improving. Everyone's staying the same. Did they think about the children that have already been to the middle school, already gone and saw lockers and got excited? They're going to be in sixth grade, and all of a sudden their parents are excited. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to learn your combination. You're going to meet new friends. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And then the bombshell came out. No, nope, kidding. Yeah, everything that you've been absolutely did. So, to. so what we've done is make the best decision for the students and their academic success. It is very unfortunate. That they gave, that they took a very early in the spring. Hey, let me finish. Let me finish. One thing. It is very un no. Let me finish, please. No, let me finish because I did not finish before you interrupted me, sir. We have fifty-three days left of school. This is standard for our fifth graders, so we can do all the fun things at the end to go to that middle school to inform the parents what they are going to need, to get the kids pumped up and excited, because you know it's a big thing to go there. We have been working on that since they have been in preschool. I have friends, children, who are devastated, upset. You are rocking people's world, but you know what? It doesn't bother me when you mess with me, but when you start messing with children, and fifth graders are crying to preschool teachers, Oh my gosh, I'm not going to get to go now. Shame on you for that. And it is, go for it. I'm done. But shame on you for not thinking so, about those little people first. Because those are little people. I thought and you were this done. Is their life. I thought you were done. So, we did think about students. And we're making the best decision for students' academic outcomes. Now, it is unfortunate that they took kids through the middle school that early before before we had a chance to make that decision and they knew we were considering it the school district the and the board excuse me excuse me the school district and the board has been very clear in meetings that they were considering consolidation and grade reconfiguration they've spoken about it almost every meeting for the last year did we put so anything everyone was the community aware. to the fifth grade parents Saying, That's you know, what public board option. meetings are for. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so everyone was aware that we were considering the reconfiguration. So at some point, you have to make a decision. Shame on you. I'm going to push back on you a little bit because it sounds very much when you say that it is unfortunate that they, which is. I didn't know what was going on until it started. If you could let me finish. Which you're talking about our, our principals, our admin team and our teachers, when you say that it is unfortunate that they took them on this tour at this implied inappropriate time, I know, uh, no, you did. It, the implication, I said implied inappropriate time. I'm gonna have to ask you to own some of that because had you attended our leadership meetings as a superintendent of schools, you would have been part of those discussions and you could have steered us in a better direction. So I'm going to ask you to own some of that. And I'm also going to ask you, what better week is there to do something like that other than National Student Choice Week, which is when we did it and when we have done it for years. So if you have studied more than just the numbers of our district, then you would have known that and you would have gotten ahead of it. So please do not blame me or my teachers and, and get, send out the word that we did something inappropriate. 
because we did not. Okay. Fair enough. I'm not blaming you. It is unfortunate that it happened so early, earlier than I could have intervened because I did not know yet that it was going to occur. So I'm glad okay. had you been in those us. meetings, you would have known. But the or, 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 or had my own staff told me. Today. Excuse me. Or had my own staff told me. I would have so you were uninformed. But, uh, and when? No. Yes. yes. I was uninformed, yes. and it's unfortunate that it occurred. Well, board when the staff knew us, that we were t talking about reconfiguring grants. Without the public here. media, that it's our fault. I would have. You can own that. I didn't. David Brasser Holtz did today. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I didn't. You own this. You have to that's not my. Time. That's not my. Statement. No, you were on the board. No, I said that's not the statement. Those are your people. Those are your people. Let's step up. There's to have our backs. I guess we just never had a board or leaders who did not talk to the people who were actually working with us. In my experience, in, in my experience, I think a number of them have been to the schools. Oh, I've, certainly no. seen, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've certainly seen some press about it. They we have not invited been. them to every event that we have held and not a single board member or yourself has attended. And and except on a Saturday. You probably have not time. been here in, during a major event other than Showcase Week, so exactly. you are I've, excused. I've, I've been to a number of, of meetings at the schools and I'm trying to get to every school fairly often. I would as love you to know, invite you top today. level, then down level, yes, and as I move down. I'm sorry? I would love to invite you. We have a huge community event today. It is all of our three elementary schools, four, including Merit. I have included them as well. Um, we have a literacy night for our families. It is one of our title things we do. We invite families in for a free dinner, and then we provide activities and um, learning awesome. games and fun for families and their children to come for the evening. So it's 6 to 7.15. We would love to have you participate. Can't be here tonight, but I would love to be invited to one with a little notice again. Ooh, that's right. oh, notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Um, will you be allowing us to reapply for the grants in time? Uh, I don't know the answer to that yet. The answer is probably no. So you said that you have to look at budget to let us know whether or not you'll have counselors in the building. There's a way to have them and you're not going to allow it. And you said that there is equal opportunity for academics and SEL and that right there, your response takes that SEL out of the question. No, it doesn't take SEL out of the question. It might take counsel, some counselors out of the question. I will tell you the majority of our students are seeing counselors on a regular basis for support. I believe that. And probably a lot of social workers as well. Mm -hmm. So one and you're removing that for them and their six. So yeah, so why what's the rationale? If you don't we, mind well, asking for No, I don't mind at all. We grades. are not the Department of Health and Human Services. It actually exists. And, and delivering social services through schools tends to delete to deter a lot of focus on education. And no, you can't educate us. You can't. Our children don't feel safe because it's regulated. But we're going to prioritize. We're not going to prioritize that. You can't. You can't. Foundation. Understood. Does it? Does it grant help fund this? Yes. She has a plan. Yes. There's a grant available that would fund it. That is a very serious problem. Alone in first grade this year, I had a student that was his father tried to kill him. Uh, I, I understand, and you're required to report that. I hope it was important. It would be much more difficult because we didn't have the counselors and the staff. Yeah, and the staff. But I just, we've had, you know, uh, we've had a murder suicide. I'm uh, aware of it. Well, they, you know, those kids, those children, you know, they're in our room. Those Did you have a social worker in the school? No. Yeah. 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 She's right there. She's right Did a murder suicide still occur? Oh, you know, I know. 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 I know
Wait, wait, sir, you are blaming me for that murder suicide. I am no, I'm not blaming you for that. You said, do you have social yeah. records that should have been prevented? No, I did not. I said, yeah, yeah, that was I said it did prevent. Totally My point mm -hmm. is that it didn't, and it couldn't. That's not your fault. No, but it That's helps, none of our it helps us support we didn't do kids that. afterwards. And we didn't say, we didn't call statements that it would have prevented it either. So that's my question. I'm sorry. What yes. criteria I apologize. Are you, what criteria are you using to determine a successful student? Academic outcomes for students. Only academic outcomes, like test C seven. This is C7. this is education. So, so we're about academic outcomes. So so what academic outcomes? So. We have a number of tests, not just state standards, uh, state standardized tests. To be honest with you, I don't think that always tells the story. I'm a data geek, so I find I, I, yeah, I understand. But so I think normative and summative assessments matter. I think understanding the child's uh, 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 mastery, not just scores, is an important part of that. I know that. We've been successful. So we are a successful school. And do you not think you can improve? We do. We do. do. There you go. That's all so I'm saying. We're going to focus on improving. I did not say you're not successful. No, I did not. I said we're going to continue to work on improvements. We always do. So why do we need a charter school to do that? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be a charter school. That's just one. That's just one alternative. We're going to continue to look at alternatives. Okay. So you're after the numbers, but not the success of the children. After the academic success of the children. At the cost of children's and then both have expired. No. You can't have children. That's why you have to have both academic success. But they can't continue doing what they're doing, our social workers and counselors, to get a grant so they can stay in our schools, then the help with the success and academia of our children. We will continue to evaluate grants on a case-by-case -case basis as to whether but do you or not we believe that they things will have to be written soon to be put in so they will have a job come August. Yes. We are not about preserving jobs. We're about educating children. Well, to educate that children, will always be and the we're priority. letting the counselors go or the social workers go, your academia success will go down. And there is data on that one. <laughs> the other thing I want to say, Back. I'm helping people back there because I've had my kids talk. I don't know that mental health is out and it's not supposed to be in here. I am um, got my degree in child development, and my certification from the state of Colorado is student support services. It's not a mental health degree, and I am a student support person Understood. here to support the students in their academics, in their career pursuits and to make sure that they have the regulation and the ability to make friends and feel safe so that they can succeed in school. And to say that that's not necessary, it's about academics, is absolutely the most foolish, foolhardy idea in the entire world to think that if you do not have that foundation, that your kids are gonna thrive. I would say it's not necessary, so we're gonna to continue to have SEL and student support. If the budget allows. And then you're leaving in June. I so, would bet on that, but I don't would, know. So, okay, perfect. So you'll be able to, like, with all this change, you'll be able to execute the change of the district. You'll be able to help us get through adding sixth grade to an office. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Will. Awesome. I will make certain that there's not duty there, even if it weren't me. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't make the board's decisions for them. They will make their own decisions. Okay. But, we also voted on the school lunch program. I have five kids in the district. That's five three meals a day that's a huge help and, and breakfast breakfast and lunch you can imagine my grocery bill right and you have, you have I can't no I have four kids right so one more okay so why is there talk about taking away this school lunch program and wait one second how many of you have ever bought food for a child at our school okay out of your own grocery bill $3.85 so without <laughs> what $3.85 for you that's all today okay. So without saying that no decisions have been made, let's have some transparency. What is the talk about the school lunch program next year? Okay. So the and school why? lunch program you have today pays for free and reduced lunches, which is free lunches because it's just a, a tricky little mm -hmm. phrase. It's free lunches for everyone that qualifies according to need. Uh, Proposition FF passed saying that, oh, even if you don't have need, 
somebody else will go ahead and pay for your kids' meals anyway. As an option. I'm sure you're aware the law you voted on that was passed said it is optional for districts to choose to participate. But so why this I'm district, why wouldn't they? like any, yes it is, uh, like any other district, we are weighing up the option. But why We're not the only district. Why would option. you say no? What is the benefit well, let me, of Let me give you an example. No? Let's say uh, Judy makes $250,000 a year. And she says, gee, I wish you would pay for my kids' meals. Um, doesn't seem entirely but appropriate. But do you know what's going on? We don't care. Judy's life that she's making that decision. I know she's prioritizing your spending, and your children's food should be a fairly high priority. <laughs> Well, then you're not. Am I wrong in assuming that we will still pay for the tax even if it's not available? Of course. Absolutely. Even if it's not available in our district. Absolutely. That's messed up. Well, it, so think about it another way, and this is just another example. Let's say uh, someone robbed a bank and threw the money on the table and said, "Take some." <coughs> Which take it? No. One. So it wasn't oh, yours. Because that was the illegal. Because it wasn't yours. It's not illegal. It's, it's not, not illegal. illegal. So, I, when people voted on that, and you're so big on it's being optional. that they voted on the board. It's, they voted on really it being so. optional. They, 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 wanted, they voted majority. It's people voted for, for it because they wanted to make sure the kids ate. And now the school board is saying, oh, we don't care if the voters want the kids to eat, but we really don't but care if we voted, eat or not. We voted in our, our board. Yeah, so again, to so be clear, who pays, who pays for like the program is right optional. now? I, I know. And we'll figure out what option. I know, but who pays right now the kids that are not on free and reduced lunches? And we have so much money that we owe for school lunches for these kids that can't pay for their lunches, but they don't qualify for free and reduced. Who pays for that? Where does that funding come from? Because I see that going up. Comes from the taxpayers too. They're taking a collection. I know a lot of people who have money are coming to the schools and paying the bills for the kids. For other kids. For other kids. For other other kids. kids. Mm -hmm. And we also have a number of parents who just choose not to pay because nobody pays them. So the children pay the price to their parents is what you're saying. Oh, I, I would love for you to walk our You're all about numbers, not about families. people. I'm worried about people. Yeah. And my you question can. actually is how are you going to handle that and reassure parents? that there's a safe place for their middle schoolers to go. We and have high schoolers, because I feel like that's We have two and middle schools, and the other middle school didn't have any teachers walk out. Well, and I'm not and and I, I might suggest that they're not threatened. They are being insulated. <laughs> okay, but as a parent, and I would, I would suggest... That's like, my choice matters. But as a parent, like, I obviously chose not to send my child to merit. Right. For a reason, and now this is not available really either in this stable, uh, stable, insulating, safe atmosphere. You continue to have two choices, so, then, so make your best one. Thank you. So that's that's your how you're going to reassure parents. parents is we we have choices available. To we have choices available. No, I told you we're going to fix the situation in the middle school. Yeah. But the point is. You okay. have choices and you make this one. But you we encourage that, everyone to be You thoughtful. feel confident that you're going to fix mm -hmm. that instability. Absolutely. At, and I'm honest. Absolutely. In the middle school at the district. Absolutely. Wide. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. That firing the teachers is going to help the stability of the students in the classroom. No, I didn't say that. Hopefully that's not yes, necessary, right? Threats, making and the anxiety and the stress mm -hmm. that this district is feeling is feeling very sick. Mm -hmm. We have teachers who are medically discharged. We have teachers who... Do you have a question or are you just going to lecture them? Oh, okay. If you don't have a question, so I have a that's what's going on now. That's what's going on. Yeah. I think the question coming out of that is it's real obvious that a lot of us feel like we are trying. We are trying to listen. I have been going around. Don't, don't interrupt, please. I have gone around to every single school. But you're not hearing. And I, I no, you're not listening. I don't have to agree. I don't have to agree. Everything you're saying is okay. We're doing it our way. We don't care. My way is my way. Please, please. Trying to make sure that we're making the best decision for students. 
all of these conversations help me understand what the fears and perspectives are, and what the concerns are, and we will still have the same decisions and then move forward with the same. I think I received an easy fix to improve things. You guys have a lot of the plan. You can just give us a heads up. Like, hey, this is. I kind of just went through the next year. No, you only went to the next year. Yes, I did. I don't think it's not enjoyable to work some things. I, I, I take this school, I visited here three times before I work. I took a $30,000 pay cut. My take home, my first year with the master's was $100 a day. I did it. Did you say the pay cut I took for the education? Well, we're in the trenches. We're in the kids. And that's why we're here. But getting those emails and having those emails you inform us in your informants, but you don't share with us. You don't talk. You don't include us. collaborate. And this Friday at four o'clock, it's like a sense of joy because you said big changes are coming. And we're like, Mr. Whit, we can take change, share it with us, talk with us. But instead, we're just getting these four o'clock Friday meetings. So well, this, that that is that, that is part like, of the sharing. And, and as we do it, I'm getting, I'm getting a, a lot of pushback that, gee, you just dropped this on us. You have to talk about the example. But could you, no, could, you could we have like talk. teacher collaborations? Could you send the data from each school? Could we have something where we're like part of the process? Okay, I guess my question to you can you value the teacher? Absolutely. As I've said before, I sincerely <laughs> hope that all of our teachers stay. Who are, who are in fact aligned with the vision and that's the part. Who is aligned with the vision? Who is aligned with their vision? Well, and we're doing everything we can. You and the board can do that. Sorry, ma'am. All right, I think that's all the time I've got, but I'll take my phone. One more. You call yourself the Alara, but you are actually the Alara. I think you said it earlier. Is you a board? You do? No, it's the administration. Okay. We are the administration. Right. So, right. so, so that last yeah. board meeting mm -hmm. was a while ago, and it didn't mention sixth grade, but yet you refer to yourself as me a lot. Sixth grade. So when did this happen? When was this talk? So again, in the, the last board? year, I have this to a number of boys in this room that said we're going to have to make decisions. Yeah. Right. But, but this is this today. But of course, but this is sixth grade. Right now, right. like so, in the last month, when so, did, when so did let me the board tell you to coach on I'm pretty sure that there's been a series of discussions that have to be made. When we got to, to, where were these discussions? When we got to the board the decision, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I announced it. What photos are you going to have? Who's we? You keep who's saying. Who's we? Who's we? Yeah. Who's the administration? Yeah. Like, yeah. Who's the administration? So, thank you. I do have to leave. We'll see you at Retro Night. It's okay. It's right. It's Friday night. Friday night. What time? What time is Retro Night? Wow. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Friday night. And reach out if you have questions. Oh, my God. What happened? Okay. Absolutely. Want to address them? No. Next time you come, can you please introduce yourself at the beginning? Next time you come, can you please introduce yourself at the beginning? Because sure. there might be some people that don't know you. I'm sorry, I, I thought that uh, this video was set up and people knew who I was. I am Ken Witt. I'm the superintendent of Wheeler Park Schools. Welcome. Interim. 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 Interim.